Hey up everybody, welcome back to the Audio Cycling YouTube channel. Today it's the big one. We're going to be taking a look at the Vela Games Super Classico for the World Championships Road Race. It's a very important one to get right because, of course, alongside the honour of potentially getting the highest score, it's also a Category 1 race, so you're going to have some really big points on offer. I think it's 600 points for first place, and then 540 for second place, and 480 for third place. And that's really big when you consider that, you know, Category 3 race, like there are many still to come in this competition. There's a 300 points for the winner, so it's going to be really important to get this right. Tade Pogacar, Wout Van Aert, Alaphilippe, Van der Poel. So let's try and dissect who are the best ones. Pogacar seems like a pretty nailed on one. I've seen a lot of people probably going to be picking him. A lot of people predicting him for the win. It's a course that suits him. I think he's done very well over this sort of terrain in the past. And although his team is a bit smaller, I think that his win at Montreal is certainly a good indication that he is in good form going into this World Championships. I think that he is going to be a good choice and probably one that I would be recommending you put on. Wout Van Aert is a little bit perhaps touch and go with some people. I think that, you know, some people see that he's not very good at finishing from small groups, which is like a fair point. But when you look at his results in one day races, like his last 25 one day race results or something. I think his lowest finishing is like 12th or something. And like again, Bevel Gummini even finished like 11th for the world champs last year, even though it was like a technical like failure for the Belgian team or whatever. So Wout Van Aert, I think that he is a great choice. I don't really see him like, you know, coming outside the top 10 in all honesty. I think that, you know, he should be competing for the win here. Alaphilippe Philippe at 30. The red herring, really, just because we don't really know what kind of form he's in. He's had crashes this year, and I don't really know where his legs are at. He crashed out of a Vuelta, and I'm just not sure about picking him. I think that there's uncertainty. If you're lower down in the leaderboards, for example, and you're looking for a bit of a, a Hail Mary for a, of a rider who could potentially pick you up like a good result where not many people are picking him, Alaphilippe's probably your guy. But if you're higher up the leaderboards, I'd probably say play it a bit safer and go with somebody like Pogaccio, Wattman or or even Van der Poel. I think that Van der Poel is another good shout. Again, a, cont a contender for the win here. I'd be surprised to be finished outside the top 10, similar to Wattman Art. Although there were some tweets today that I saw Van der Poel was like giving some comments about the road race and how he's not like feeling great or something like that i can't exactly remember what the what the quotes were but he was kind of playing down his chances so i'm not sure if that's just smoke and mirrors or whether to actually read into that that's truth but van der Poel, i think is a good choice for 30 i think that if you need to save two credits on a pigatra or wow and van der Poel's no kind of like no slouch really even the another strange one because he didn't win the time trial which indicates to me that perhaps he's not on the greatest of form after the Vuelta. I would have expected him to pretty easily win that TT. So I'm not certain about picking Avenapool, considering that I think that he also said that he'll be working for Wattman Art this year. Of course, we saw how that worked last year, but whatever. Yves Lampard, 24, Sagan, Steuben, I don't think these are good picks. I think Matthews could be a good one. He would be a guy probably to finish somewhere between 5th and 10th in my eyes. I don't think that he'd make the move. I don't think he's got the legs for that. But I think that you know winning a reduced sprint from kind of like the second group is a fairly likely scenario for Matthews. Seneschal will be a domestique. Ballerini will be a domestique as well. Now we go on to a lot of the Frenchmen. We've got Bardet, Cousinefoy, and there's also Laporte a little bit further down in the 20-point category. All these are good choices in my eyes. You know, France have nine riders, which is the biggest team, of course, because Alaphilippe won last year. And I think all of them are, like, good choices to some extent. I think that Cousin of Foix and maybe Madouas would be the likely candidates to be the leaders for France. And Bardet and Laporte maybe being domestiques, especially Bardet. I think Laporte could sit in behind and be a bit of a sprint option. Bardet could be a bit of an attacking option on some earlier laps. Of course, we saw friends being very, very aggressive at the World Champs last year. So I think that all of them are good choices. I say that Cousin of Foix is my favourite one just because this course is very suited to his kind of characteristics as opposed to like Bardet. And I think that Laporte might struggle a little bit, although he did do very well at Tour of Denmark on like that final stage, I think it was stage five, where he won on a very similar sort of circuit race. Full Sang. Hey to Christophe, I'm not really massive fans of. Hater will spend so much time at the back, he'll end up like missing the move or something like that. Mollema could be a decent one for the Netherlands if Van der Poel doesn't work out for them. Stibar's probably not great. Nevis Trenton, just they just haven't shown the form recently. Perhaps Trenton actually, to be fair to him, he was looking pretty good at the Tour of Luxembourg. 
but I just think that the climb's a bit too steep for him in all honesty. 18 point riders, I'm not a massive fan of any of them. You could say Van Baal, just because the race is really long, he seems to really get a bit of a bonus when the race hits over 250 kilometers. 16 point riders, you've got a plethora of 16 point riders that you can go with. I think that you got Baljoli, who looked really good at Montreal. He managed to follow the move of Wout Art and then Pagaccia, and then Wout was being dropped and Baljoli came around him. So I really like Baljoli for this race. I've seen a couple of reasons why he might not be a great choice. For example, he hasn't really been competitive in a race of this distance before, which is like a fair enough point, to be honest with you. But I do think that he suits this race quite a lot and is probably one of the best options for Italy. Betiel's another good one, of course. Did pretty good at Quebec, but then got dropped at Montreal, which does make me a little bit apprehensive about picking him because if he's getting dropped to Montreal, he's probably going to get dropped here. He's not like the snappiest rider in the world, if you get what I mean. He's not like a Wout, a Van der Poel, a Pog. I do see that it would be hard for him to follow that initial move. Perhaps he might be in the second group, for example. Honore is a good one as well. I think he did really... He's been very consistent recently. I think he finished like sixth place or something. Fifth, sixth at Quebec. And then I think he finished inside the top 15 in Montreal. Did well at Britannia Classic. So he's clearly done very well over this sort of terrain in the past should be one of the leaders for Denmark I think that he is a good choice to probably come inside the top 10. It's cool if he managed to find some of the climb and Leslie's had this year for example like Tour de Suisse I do think that he could be a good shout but again a bit questionable as to whether he would be the best 16 point rider I think that the best one hands down goes to Valentin Madouas who has just been on fire at the Tour of Luxembourg recently I think that, you know, he's done races of this distance very well in the past. I think back to Flanders earlier this year. He was up there setting up Philippe last year in the World Championship. So he's very accustomed to this kind of race distance. And as a Breton rider, he's just very, very used to this sort of terrain. Best 14-point riders, Simon Clark, possibly for Australia. You've got Higita for Colombia, although he didn't look that great at the Vuelta, it must be noted. Lorenzo Rota could be a pretty sneaky one, considering that he's had a very quietly successful year in terms of one-day races. Could be a great option for Italy to come in, possibly inside the top 15, at best maybe like a top 10. Uh, Sivakov will be another rider for France who might kind of try and attack early, although it must be said this course doesn't massively suit Sivakov. Jake Stewart could be a decent option for Great Britain, but I don't really see him being massively competitive in my eyes. Um, 12 point riders, there aren't too many which I like the look of. Possibly Paulus if he can find that world champs form of last year, although he hasn't looked massively like brilliant recently, especially like the Canadian races. You've got the world time trial champion, Tobias Voss. He's 10 points. Um, I'm not sure what he's kind of like at one day races. I know he's done decently in some under 23 one day races like Liège and the world championships, for example. But I think that this could be a different kettle of fish. And I don't really see Foss doing too much. Nick Schultz could be a decent one as well. He kind of blows hot and cold in some one day races, um, but could be a good option for Australia if Matthews is struggling. Fred Wright would be a good one for Team GB, although he's very late on in the season. He's done the Tour and the Vuelta. I do expect him to be quite tired, and he doesn't quite have that snap, similar to Betiol, to really follow the move. But I do think that Fred Wright will probably be the highest finisher for the GB team. The best eight-point rider, hands down, is Biniam Gurmai. I'd probably recommend you pick him, considering that next year, Gurmai will probably be like 20 points, so you may as well make the most of him whilst he's eight points and like put him on. Um, but there are some other ones. Battistella showed a pretty good legs at the Vuelta, so that's a decent one. You could go Quentin Hermans as well. Of course, second place at Liège, so he's obviously very used to this sort of terrain. Very fast finish, of course, he beat Wattman Art there, but he will be working for the Belgian team, so I'm not sure how much freedom he's going to get or where he'll finish, where he might be just kind of like blown out of the back just because he's working all the time for Wattman Art. But he could get assist points for Wattman Art if he comes on the podium as well. That's another thing worth considering. Jonathan Navarez for Ecuador. Kind of a good pick because he has shown some good legs at like Beamer Classic, Stradi Bianchi. But then he just kind of goes missing in some other races and I can't quite pin down when he's going to do well and when he's not going to do well. I think that it's much safer going with a Quentin Hermans or a Biniam Gurmai more than likely. I think that's it for the eight-point riders. Really, maybe Ben Tullet on like a really good day could be good for GB, but I'm not overly convinced. Six-point riders, I think there are some really good ones actually that you can choose from. You've got Alexander Camp. Fifth place at Amstel Gold this year. Third place at Britannia Classic. Can clearly do the distance. 
It's a race that really suits him. He seems to do better on circuit races, so a good option there for six points. But you've also got Andreas Lechnesen, who does very well over this circuit races as well. Look back, I think it was to like Tour of Norway, Tour de Suisse, stuff like that, and also at Montreal, I think it was, where he was doing really well. So another good choice for you there. Then there's also Quentin Pacher, possibly, but I think he'll just be a domestique. Mara Schmidt will be a good one, sixth place at Montreal, 19th place at Quebec. Not massively renowned for his one-day results in the past, but I think that he will have the freedom to do what he wants because Switzerland don't really have an out-and-out -out leader. Matthias Skelmos Jensen has just won the Tour of Luxembourg, so he's probably, in my opinion, the best six-point rider just because when you consider what he's done this year, six points is just outrageously cheap for this kind of quality of rider. I think that he is the best six-point rider that you can choose. Jan Tratnik could have some freedom, but I expect him more than likely to be working for Pagaccia. And then you got George Zimmerman for Germany. Again, kind of similar to Schmidt. I think he'll have freedom to do his own thing because Germany don't really have an out-and-out -out leader. If anything, Zimmerman is the best rider on their team. So six points seems like a bit of a steal for the German. And then the four-point riders, I think the best one is Magnus Sheffield pretty easily. Um, maybe Luke Plapp, maybe Novak for the assist points. So now that's all the riders, I want to take you through what I'm kind of thinking in terms of teams. Your first option, you can't pick all three of the big ones. You can't pick Wout, Van der Poel and Pog. You have to sacrifice one. So your first option is kind of to do something where you have something like this on the screen, where you have Wow and Art Pagaccia or whichever way around, like you could have Van der Poel in there as well. And then you've got some six-point riders in there and Schmidt and Skelmos, Benyam Gamay and Valentin Madwas. If you wanted to spread your points out a little bit more, you could take off Wout and Art, for example, and put on um, like Benoit Cousnefois, and then improve Skelmos Jensen up to Laporte, and then you'd have to bump down like Pagaccia to Van der Poel. Or if you wanted to kind of keep... Um, Pagatra in there then you'd have to remove Germay and put on a different six pointer for example your team would end up looking like like that so those are kind of the two things I'm going at you either have two of the big three or you just have one of the big three and then you spread the points out a bit more evenly but let me know in the comments down below which one you think is best which riders you are thinking of going with and all that's left to say is good luck in the race and I'll speak to you in the next video salut <laughs>